Hey guys, I'm just getting over a flu, so I apologize if I don't sound all that great. <clears throat> but uh, I'm trying to put together this video uh, just to explain a little bit the um, progress that I made on the meal. And you might rightfully wonder, I uh, thought you were building an airplane, what happened to the airplane? And progress is being made on the airplane side also. I just finished, uh, just the other day, I finished. Uh, Installing the left axle, putting fiberglass underneath the, the axle, and the, uh, measuring things up. Um, nice all cured up. Uh, actually, it's up there. I can probably turn the camera and show it to you real quick. Uh, let's see if you can see it up there. Yeah, you might be able to see in the center of the picture there. Anyway, it's all dried up. I just need to uh, sand it and just put the tire on, and that's. Uh, Pretty much that side is pretty much done. I also have to kind of send a little bit of clearance uh, at the very end for the brakes. But it's that side is mostly done. Next will be the other side. But uh, coming back to our video, this video is uh, to update you a little bit on the progress of the CNC. Sorry about that. And F18 is going by up here. It looks like we're always under attack. So. Uh, if you've seen the last video, I've been able to write a little quick program, a uh, G-code program for the Mac, Mac controller that controls the, uh, the mill to uh, surface uh, this plate. This plate is going to be part of the assembly for um, the Z-axis. It's actually the right, uh, it's going to attach to the right side of the mill and help support the old shebang. And um, actually, we can probably take a quick look. It's still on the mill there, getting ready to be worked on. And uh, hopefully, it's in focus. And you can see I kind of traced a little bit an outline of uh, the part that I'm trying to to mill. I already drilled some holes and machined that part down. It might be a little bit hard to see. It's uh, down about uh, fifty thousands, I believe. I can't remember. Um, I, uh, I don't want to say I have machined it by hand, but uh, because it's not really done by hand, I did it with a CNC. But I was running, I was running it, uh, running it by hand, basically uh, doing that cut. And the Z at this stage, the Z obviously is still uh, being run by by hand by me, and uh, that's why that's what these parts are being made of uh, for, so that I can. Uh, turning it into a completely three-axis CNC mill. So what I'd like to talk to you about today is uh, uh, my very first program for actually doing some real milling on uh, this mill, although it's still X, Y axis and still have to work the, the vertical manually. Um, this time we're actually going to run the mill like it was meant to be run, uh, starting the switch and letting it do its thing. So. Uh, while I was sick in bed uh, and I couldn't work on the airplane, I uh, took the computer with me and worked on uh, uh, the uh, G code for for the mill and uh, for cutting this part on the mill. And I just want to quickly share with you, show you what I had to go through to get this code uh, to the mill. Still, I'm not sure if it's going to work. I mean, it looks like it's going to work uh, on paper and on the and on the uh, screen, but uh, it remains to be seen whether it does uh, what it's supposed to do once it gets to the actual machine. So I'll walk you through uh, the steps uh, and show you some of the screens that I use, some of the programs that I used. Uh, and uh, again, this is the very first time that I put all of this together. Uh, I've used some of these programs before just to learn them uh, a little bit, how to use them. Uh, but this is the first time they're really supposed to coalesce together into a uh, real G-code program that I can run and operate this mill as it was meant to. So I'm kind of like a little bit excited and a little bit, you know, I don't want to say fearful, but you know, hopefully I don't damage anything, you know. If the part, you know, gets messed up, uh, I can always just do another one, but hopefully <laughs> we don't end up damaging the machine because the, the travel limits uh, switches on this uh, mill I know I have not been installed yet. I bought them. Uh, I haven't quite figured out how and where to install them. I'll do that 
a little bit later. Um, I would like to get the z-axis running so that I can string the cables, you know, uh, get all the parts where they need to be and then figure out where everything can go. Uh, so uh, the first thing that I did when uh, when I uh, want to make that cut, it's just a pretty simple cut, it's not straight, it's got a contour, it's got a few diagonals, a few flats and and uh, I think it's just one curve. Uh, so I thought it was simple enough. I figure, you know, hey, I'm studying G code and I can probably do it, you know, do it by hand. And uh, I started transcribing all the all the points. I think I might have uh, uh, something here. Yeah. So I kind of drew drew it up a little bit. See if you can see it. Exactly as it's sitting on the machine and set up my zero here and started getting coordinates and trying to figure tool offsets and things started getting complicated because how much clearance did I want to leave for the roughing cut and what about for the finishing cut and depths and speeds and all that and you know next thing you know it started getting very complicated and I was spending a lot of time on this that I could have been spending learning uh, how to run these programs that do it for me and yeah I, th I think it was uh, a diminishing return type of thing and the more time I spent on that the less amount of productivity I was getting out I could have spent that, that same amount of time on these programs and learn how to run them and have something to show for so I decided to stop doing it by hand and I figure you know it's probably easier to edit the G code than it is to actually write it and indeed it was true. So the next step I took is started uh, I designed a part on the, the computer on the CAD program and I will show it to you. Then I imported the file to a CAM software which is a computer aided machining software. I had to do a lot of work with it um, that generates the tool paths that will actually cut the part and I'll show you some of the things that I that I've done and then generated a uh, g-code which is pretty much like a text type format and uh, for cutting that part you know, it could I admit it could have been done a little more succinctly but uh, it's still nine pages worth of uh, of the g-code so uh, that's why it probably was a good reason good idea to abandon doing it by hand and start going with the, with the dedicated software anyway this uh, g-code I printed out nine pages worth, went through it, and had to change uh, a few things. Uh, there were a couple of mistakes, uh, some weird loops that the machine was doing for no good reason. And uh, uh, yes, I had to uh, put stops every time that uh, uh, there is a Z axis motion. Uh, in other words, the machine is cutting, it's getting to the end of that particular cut the cutter retracts, moves somewhere else, plunges, and does another cut. Well, since my z-axis is not connected, if I didn't stop the machine, it would just get to where the cut ended, not lift because the command wouldn't go anywhere, and then quickly drag itself to another spot, chopping everything in between, and if it's moving fast enough, probably just damaging things. So it was very important I was able to stop the machine from running, raise the mill manually, allow it to go to the next step, lower it manually, and then run the program again until the next time it stops. So I had to go through uh, through nine pages, putting stops here and there, and then try to run it, you know, running on a simulation, make sure that everything worked. And uh, I'll show you some of that as well. So that's in a nutshell is uh, what is going on. And uh, I'll turn the camera around now and kind of show you a little bit uh, what we've been discussing and then we'll run this machine, keep our fingers crossed and uh, hopefully we get a nice part out of it. And if it doesn't, uh, we'll just have to make a new video <laughs> when it does work. All right.